Racing wheel controllers are a ton of fun to play games with. The feeling of the wheel reacting in your hands, the cold metal of the pedals beneath your feet, the cool highway breeze flowing through your hair. Anyway, if you've sought to find that feeling in non-racing games, but have nowhere to start from, you've come to the right place. Hello everyone, my name is Akalo and I'm an affiliated streamer over at twitch.tv slash Akalo, the link to which will be in the description. Today I'm going to be walking you through the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get your steering wheel doing things that it was not intended to do, including downloading necessary software, calibration of the wheel within that software, how to remap your buttons to function correctly, and a few tips and tricks I picked up while troubleshooting that might save you a headache or two yourself. For the first step, you're going to need to download some third-party software. A lot of the guides I found while figuring this out for myself said that Logitech G-Hub or Logitech Gaming Software were the way to go. Unfortunately, I have found that both of these softwares have several issues plaguing them regarding the racing wheel. Um, from Logitech Gaming Software, which is this one, either not being able to discover the wheel, which should be about here, um, to not reading inputs once you've remapped the, the buttons, um, to Logitech G-Hub, which recognizes my microphone just fine, but unfortunately will sit trying to connect to the wheel for forever, no matter how long I wait or regardless of restarting. Enter Joy2Key, the button remapping software of our choice. Now I have a Logitech G29 racing wheel, but this should work for any brand of racing wheel you have, so don't let that stop you. In my eight or nine hours of troubleshooting this issue, Joy2Key is the only program that I have found that works consistently. As you can see, I'm inputting buttons and turning the wheel um, on the overlay below me, and it's translating into button presses in real time. If I had the game open, my character would be doing things. Okay, now that we've covered the why, let's jump into the how. First, you're going to need to go to this website, uh, joy2key.net slash download, the link to which I will leave in the description, so you can just click on the link. Um, and you're going to want to go to download the latest version and go to download joy2key installer from uh, the first link here. Click on this and it should start downloading it. I already have it downloaded and installed, so let's just skip ahead to the next step once you have it in. Once you've downloaded and installed Joy2Key, you should have a screen that looks something like the one I have here, um, minus the Hades profile that I've already set up for my own use. Um, but I'll make a new profile along with you here just to walk you through it. So what you're going to want to do is go to File, New, make a profile name. We're going to go with Test for mine. You can name yours whatever you want. Okay. So, the first thing you want to do when you're working on your brand new profile is to make sure that everything is configured correctly. So the way to do that, you want to go into Settings, Configure Joysticks, Advanced Settings for each device, and then here you want to make sure that you select the wheel, so in my case G29 Driving Force Racing Wheel connected. Um, and then, if I move the wheel around, you should we should see the x-axis on stick 1 moving. Um, if I press some pedals, we're going to see the Y axis on stick one moving. Um, and then stick two, the clutch will move here. Um, and over here we have the RZ for the brake moving. As a side note, if you're finding that one or a few of your pedals are not producing responses in these dots, what you're going to need to do is go into these settings and change them to uh, RZ and axis 7 uh, respectively. As we can see when we push the brake button it's producing a reaction on this RZ axis so if we didn't have this set as horizontal it wouldn't move. Um, same here the clutch is axis 7 on slider 1 so setting this to axis 7 will allow you to make changes using this pedal. Okay now that we have our pedals and wheel calibrated correctly, we can hit OK and move on to the fun part, which is remapping our buttons. Um, so back on this main screen, you should see these three yellow bars highlighted by default, just meaning they're, these pedals are at rest. Um, if I hit the accelerator, we'll see the vertical on stick one move, the brake will move the horizontal on stick two, and the clutch will move the vertical on stick two, as well as turning the wheel left will 
be left on stick one, and right will be right on stick one. Remapping buttons is thankfully very simple using this software. Uh, you just right click on the stick you want to change and hit edit this button assignment. And then you can choose any button on the keyboard. So we're gonna have uh, left be A, logically. Uh, right on the wheel will be D. Uh, stick one, when we push it forward, I'm gonna want to be W to move forward. Um, the brake, we're gonna want to be um, S for moving backwards. And just like that, we can move forward, backward, left, and right using our steering wheel. Now obviously you can remap these buttons to be whatever you want them to be to fit the game you're playing. For me personally, I play a lot of action games and roguelikes, so having W, A, S, and D bound to the pedals and the steering wheel makes for the most entertaining content. Um, as for the rest of the buttons on the wheel, it's as simple as pressing a button and seeing which one highlights and then changing that one. So in this case, you can see below me on the overlay, I'm hitting circle. Button three is highlighting on the on the program. So we'd go here and say I wanted this one to be E, we'd change it to E and it's that simple. Now, every time we press this button, E will be highlighted. Now, fair warning about the pedals. Uh, I have found that it's best to leave the resting positions of the pedals, these three highlighted bars that you can see here, as no input. Um, because whenever your pedals are at rest, it will be constantly pressing this button as an input. Um, so I found it's best to leave the pedals as binary inputs so that you don't have to balance the pedal in between on and off like I am currently. Um, you can do either on, off, or in between, but otherwise, if you do it this way, you have to balance it like this the entire time, and you're gonna have sore leg syndrome pretty quick, I think. <laughs> okay, so I have gone ahead and taken the liberty of remapping a few more of the buttons here, how I like them, and let's go ahead and jump into a game just to demonstrate the efficacy of, of the software. So, Hades as an example here. Um, we can jump in and I can press down the accelerator to go up, the clutch to go down, turning the wheel left brings me left, we can start attacking and dashing around using dash on the, on the shoulder buttons, attacking, specialing, casting, really we have a full range of movement here, um, using nothing more than a steering wheel and a little bit of time. And finally, once you've configured your buttons the way you like them, and get some practice in, you too can put your money where your mouth is and do some crazy challenge runs, such as taking down the final boss of Hades in hell mode using nothing more than some willpower, some love for my community, and of course, my steering wheel. Best girl. Come on! You're going down, Dad. This is the one. Come on! Yes, come on! No more, Dad. No more. You're gonna let me see my mom. <laughs> yes! That's it! Fire. Come on! Oh. Apologies if I peeked. Go. I told you that I would, Father. And I yes! The steering wheel victory! Now, I did promise you guys some tips and tricks to help you out on your own steering wheel journeys. So, to begin with, I'd recommend you make sure you have important buttons on either side. For example, if you're playing a platforming game, have a jump on either side of the wheel. That way, if you have the wheel cranked left and this is your only jump button, this wrist down here is really hurting. So have one on the top. Mirror it on the other side and your wrists will thank you for it. My second tip is that posture is more important than ever when playing with a steering wheel. If you don't want to be really sore like I was after the first couple streams of this of playing with a steering wheel, you're going to want to make sure you're sitting up straight so when you're flailing around with your legs and cranking your upper torso left and right, you're not hurting yourself. Take care of yourself, guys. My third tip is in regards to movement. Precision movement is very difficult to do with a steering wheel, especially starting out, so don't take it too hard on yourself and keep this in mind. 
Try not to overcorrect if you go too far in one direction. The wheel will respond as soon as you take it to like here in the other direction. But if you go all the way here, you gotta wait for the wheel to come back around and you'll end up going too far in the other direction as well. And my last tip is a special one for all you content creators and streamers out there who may be finding this video trying to set up your own steering wheel. If you're interested in this overlay I have right here, I'll leave a link to that in the description. And if you guys have enough interest in it, I can make a tutorial video on how to set this boy up and get your own overlay uh, for your racing wheel for your own content creation purposes. If you guys are having any other problems getting your steering wheel set up for non-racing games, feel free to comment down below. I will get back to it ASAP, or you could ask me directly in my Discord, the link to which I will leave in the description. Um, I'm also live on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays um, starting at 8 p.m. CST. So if you want to see some steering wheel shenanigans live from yours truly, be sure to check me out there. Um, if you enjoyed the video, if it helped you out in any way, consider leaving a like, possibly subscribing to see more. And I hope you all have a great night, a great week, and I'll see you in the next one.